radical self-worthiness. We are using hair as a form of social justice by teaching the youth that we service that they are worthy, that the way that they woke up today is worthy, that the way that they were born is worthy, and that they don't have to straighten their hair, straighten their backs, or put bass in their voice to be seen or heard. My name is Madden Lopez and I am the executive director and founder of Project Q Salon and Community Center. We give haircuts to homeless LGBTQ youth of color, specifically black trans youth. When you live at the intersection of this specific marginalization, the system is stacked up so high against you that it seems almost impossible to achieve your dreams. At Project Q, we give haircuts to these folks, but also what we're doing is giving them self-empowering workshops so that they can see a brighter future. All of our workshops are also taught by other queer people of color. So while these folks are learning what their future might hold, they're seeing it already being done by someone that looks like them. Where we are right now, the civil unrest that we are experiencing is not new. It is a very old wound. This is obvious when we think about Stonewall, when we think about Marsha P. Johnson, when we think about Sylvia Rivera and understand how they had to fight in order for us to even have tools today. It is the mandate for black and brown people to avenge the suffering of our ancestors, earn the respect of future generations, and to be transformed in the service of the work. As we pick up the same fight that Sylvia and Marsha fought, we are avenging their lives as we make space for more queer youth to love who they are, we are earning the trust of future generations. What I've noticed as a queer person, as a black queer person, is that I am not just these two things separately. Like Garnet said, I'm a conversation. I'm an experience, which means that the conversation between the black community and the queer community there are people that live within that middle and hear the anti-black things that are said from the queer community and hear the anti-queer things that are said from the black community. What has happened is that has been an internalization of who I am as a person. What we do now is we have to start to deconstruct that in our own minds so that our youth grow up with the strength that was taken away from us. It's evident to me that being at this specific intersection of being black and being queer sounds like I'm, I'm holding my margins as a badge of honor. No, what I'm doing is I'm recognizing that within those, I still have body privilege, I still have accessibility privilege, and I still have financial privilege in a way that a lot of the folks that I work and serve do not have. The only way for us to actually make change right now is by looking at our privileges and owning them. Do you have a way to hire people at entry level? Use that privilege. Do you have a way to open the door instead of keeping that gate? Use that privilege to leverage for other people that do not have that opportunity. That's the only way that we will grow as a community. For folks that understand this moment for what it truly is, I just want you to know that it's not the first time we've been in this situation. And if we do not make change now, it will not be the last time. Continue to fight.